Space is Sims, and we are finally here with Taisho Alice episode three. I've tried to record this like six times already. It's not fucking working. Um, because at first I was gonna like jump in and record it, and then I was like, we can skip the thing, the opening scene, and then I was like, maybe we shouldn't, because I don't know if they're slightly different for each episode. So I was like, let me to redo it. So I started recording again, and my freaking recording software crashed, and then crashed my game. I'm like, you know what? This is not starting off well. <laughs> like, anyway, we're finally here with Taisho Ellis episode three. And I didn't start this when it first came out like I did with the second part, just because we were already recording three games at the time. And look, I did not have the capacity to pick up a fourth game, understandably. And it wasn't going to start until one game was done. Now, I know I had originally thought we'd start this and kind of mix it in um, if you were watching Cinderella Phenomenon Evermore that I think is almost done at this point. I was like, oh, maybe we'll do one and one. But I was like, I can't. I cannot do recording four different games at a time. Like, it just wasn't going to work. So um, that's why I waited. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just wait until two of our games are done so that I only have to record two things. Because I just... I need to give myself a little bit of breathing room. Doing three things at once was is getting to be a little bit much. So, And I'm running a little behind. So we just moved it down to doing the two. So here we are, finally, though. I know you had to wait a little bit, but woo! Anyway, so let's see if we can record this, if this is going to start, if we're going to be able to do this. Because if I have to read this opening couple of lines another damn time, I'm just calling it quits and we're done. So, <laughs> like, for now. Anyway. Suddenly, you find yourself lost in a world of darkness. Deja fucking boo. Oh, it does say previously read. How do you skip previously? Oh, it's previously read because I clicked through it a couple times. Like, I started to click through it and then I was like, maybe we shouldn't. We should read the whole thing. So I went back and then I started reading it and then the game crashed. So it says previously read because I was like, but you skipped through. I know, but my thing crashed. Never mind. Where am I? I keep walking and walking, but I can't seem to find a single exit. It's so dark, I can't see a thing. I can't even tell how far I've walked or how much time has passed. No matter where you go, the scenery around you remains static and unchanging. It's like the darkness has consumed everything. All sense of direction, even the very concept of time itself. Were you to stand perfectly still and hold your breath, the only sound that would be that of your own heartbeat. What am I doing here? Who am I? You can't remember a thing. Not even your own name. I can't remember anything. Alone in the dark, fear and loneliness overwhelms you. Hello? Is anyone there? If you're there, say something. Please. No one's here. Was I always alone or did I lose someone along the way? I don't know. I don't know anything. You soon grow tired of walking, but something spurs you forward in spite of yourself. Maybe I'll find something just up ahead. Your morale is in tatters and your legs are threatening to give out, but you press on regardless. Uh, wh what on earth? Out of nowhere, something seizes you by the leg, threatening to pull you down into its inky depths. No! You struggle with all your might, refusing to let the shadows swallow you up. Someone help! I can't scream that too loud of my neighbors are going to think of me. This way! Huh? We'll make a run for it. Uh, okay? Can't remember the voice we gave him, but it was kind of like angsty bitchy, so that's good enough. It's going to be really hard, though, because, like, well, Snow White, I kind of, I think we can figure that. But, like, what do we do for the wizard? We never, should we give him a really shitty Irish accent? Guys, guys, let me know now, because we, it's going to take, like, at least 10 hours, probably, before we get to his route. Because I think most of these are, like, about 20 hours, his game. So each route is, like, 10. I think that's what we were banking on each one, right? Anyway, but let me know now. Should we give the wizard a really shitty freaking weird... I say Irish accent, but it's not. That's an insult to Irish people. But you know what I mean? My shitty version of a shitty Irish accent. Should we do it? Let me know. Oh, we kind of did that with Kaguya, didn't we? No, we gave him a really bad English accent. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, let me know. <sighs> oh, that was him. Never mind. I read that as me. I... Look. 
I should know that I am you. Anyway, fuck it. Phew! Do you think we're safe here? <laughs> Whoa, are you okay? You're white as a sheet. Do I look okay to you? Unlike you, I prefer brains over brawn. I'm a deep thinker, an intellectual genius, and as such, I'm very delicate. I'm gonna die. I need air. Oh god, are you dying? I better give you mouth to mouth. You goddamn thirsty nympho slut. Yeah, because I feel like that's different. I don't think he ever called us a nympho slut. I don't know, maybe he did, and I don't remember it, but I feel like this is slightly different. Ow! Jeez, don't hit me. I was just joking. Well, you shouldn't joke about that crap. Do stupid and skank come as a package deal or what? <coughs> Are you sure you're okay? <sighs> Maybe you shouldn't shout at me if you're already out of breath. Oh, yeah? Well, who's making me shout at you? Whose fault is it? Hmm? Let's hear it. It's my fault. I'm sorry. Ah, forget it. Anyway, moving on. Seeing as I was bored enough to actually help you out, isn't there something very important you have to say to me? Who are you? Good point. Thank you very much for saving me from imminent danger. Without you, who knows what would have happened to me? <laughs> What's with that look you're giving me? Turns out being thank thanked gives me goosebumps. Whew, right in my arms. Whoosh. Whoosh, right in my arms. Whoosh. Who makes a wishing no- I- Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for rescuing me. I'm so grateful. Ah, enough already. I get it, okay? Quit repeating yourself. You're creeping me out. Oh, okay. Good grief. Okay, Charlie Brown. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't mean to click. Good grief. How dare you bully me after I went out of my way to save your life, you rude, ill-mannered, uncivilized, insolent, presumptuous, selfish, demanding brat. You have an impressive laundry list of flaws, I see. Oh, that reminds me. Actually... And you don't listen, either! Guess we can scratch that off your bingo card. So what is it you want to know? Where we are? Who I am? Ideally, I'd refuse to tell you, but I know you'll only get more annoying. So since I have no other choice, I'll tell you. Just this once. My name's Alice, and I don't know where we are. The end. Happy now? Your name is Alice? Yeah, that's right. I'm surprised you knew what I was going to ask. Of course I did. Well? Well what? I gave you my name. Now what do you say? Thank you? Wowie, you're so welcome. Put her there. As if, bird brain, when someone introduces themselves to you, the standard, polite, common-sense thing to do is to introduce yourself back. Oh, you want my name? I'm... What's the matter? Don't tell me you forgot your own name or something. Sodayo. That's right. What are you smiling and nodding about? How stupid are you? Not even knowing your own name is a major problem? I'm starting to think you don't even have a brain. Should I shake you around for a while? Maybe I'll hear your little pea brain rattle around in there like a marble. I kind of actually, I'm not going to lie, I do like being Alice because he's just so angry and it just feels fun to just be angry and yell. <laughs> like, do you know who I am, Alice? Excuse me? How would I know who you are? I hope my neighbors are having fun listening to this. Well, why did you rescue me then? Well, because, because, because I'm a nice guy, obviously. I'm a kind-hearted, benevolent soul who always lends a helping hand to those in need. Really, I'm due for my Nobel Peace Prize any day now. Oh, I see. Well, thanks again, Alice. You're just sunshine and rainbows at all times, aren't you? Even a dog or cat, no, even an amoeba would worry about the situation we're in. You think so? And for the record, that's not a compliment. I'm insulting you, got it? So what's going on in there, Jane Doe? Well, he's not going to call us. 
Hiragana Ellis or Katakana? Which one? Which one was he? Is he Katakana Ellis and we're Hiragana Ellis or the reverse? Whatever. I don't remember about like. <laughs> uh, going on and where? God, you're such a ditz. Doesn't your current predicament make you feel scared or anxious or anything? I feel like this is different because I thought in the very first one, I don't remember the second one, but I thought in the very first one, it was like, I don't know, I'll be Alice and you be Aris. Like, you know? You know what I mean? Like, which was where Hiragana Alice and Katakana Alice came into play. Like, <laughs> from the really shitty original translation before they got a hold of it and did a beautiful job. You don't even know your own name, nor do you know where we are. Don't you have any thoughts on that? Well, sure. It's pretty scary waking up in a pitch-black world with no recollection of who I am or what I'm doing here. I'm just a delicate flower, you know? Delicate flower? You sure about that? I think we have had this conversation, though. Maybe we, the name thing comes later. Ow, 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 ow! Oh, no. That's him. Ow! What are you doing? Ow! I got the feeling you were thinking something rude about me. Gah, you sadist! Now then, back on topic. Yes, I was scared. Scared that I'd be stuck here all alone, forever. And when that thing attacked me, I was terrified I would disappear. But then I found you, Alice. What, so now you have nothing to worry about? Not quite. I know that as long as I'm with you, I have nothing to fear. Uh, right. So tell me, you remember who you are, right? Unlike me? What makes you think that? Because you have such a wonderful name. Wonderful? Yeah. Ah, good lord, you truly are an imbecile. Just because I introduced myself as Alice doesn't mean it's my real name. So it's a fake name? Yeah, maybe. Bit of a vague answer, don't you think? Sorry, but I can't help it. I'm the same as you, you know. Wait, so... God, you're so dense. Long story short, I have amnesia too. Oh, okay. Wow! I expected more of a reaction than that. How can you just shrug off this major revelation? Oh my god! You have amnesia? Okay, now you're obviously faking it. Gee, thanks a lot. Okay, well, why did you introduce yourself as Alice, then? Isn't that normally a girl's name, anyway? Yeah, well, these are highly abnormal circumstances we find ourselves in, aren't they? Simply gave you the only name I could remember. Obviously. Now, is Alice actually my name or someone else's? Ultimately, it doesn't matter. If you need me to have a name, then Alice it is. And there's also a tiny infant... Infant... Infinitesimal, 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 infinitesimal. That is a. It's like I've heard of a infinitesimal. That. Are you. Wait. It doesn't sound right, though, but I've like. I don't know. Anyway. Infin. It's so weird. I'm sorry. I'm just like, just. My brain can't wrap my head around that. Infinitesimal. Infin. Infant. Infinite. Simul. Infinitesimal. It's not <laughs> infinitesimal, but. Infinitesimal? Infinitesimal? It's infinitesimal, right? I don't know why my brain. I'm just like, that doesn't sound right no matter how I say it. Anyway. There's also a tiny infinitesimal chance that your name is Alice. Oradis. The Japanese version. Uh, the Katakana version. Okay. So we. This is pretty much the same, I think. I don't remember him calling us a nympho slut, though, or whatever he called us, but. You want me to be Aris? Sure, you can be Aris. Or if that's not good enough for you, you could be Miss No Name, or Anonymous, or You Know Who, or Unknown, or whatever you want. No, no, I like Aris. From here on, I'm your new friend, Aris. Aris. Arisu? Oh, no, because it's Alice. It would be Arisu. He would say this. You. Okay, yeah, no, just... Anyway, I'm not smart today. Look, we've had to try to record this three times. I'm... <laughs> If only I wanted to be friends with you. <laughs> no need to be shy, silly. You saved my life, and that means we're friends now. 
I'm not being shy, nor am I being polite. And don't even try to give me some weird label like Sundere. Disgusting. I mean, why should you talk down to me when I'm the one who saved you? Oh, great and merciful savior, please bestow upon this worthless worm your priceless friendship. Okay, sure. Starting now, we're best buddies. Not. Do you really think that's how, that was, how this was going to play out? So the hell? That's right. You're brain dead. <laughs> if it turns out I really am Arisu, then maybe that means you and I were friends before we lost our memories. Who knows? Maybe. So tell me, Alice, what's your next move? My next move? I don't have one. You don't want to try to get out of here? Nope. How come? Well, let me ask you, Arisu. Do you think we're capable of escaping from this place, even though we don't even know where we are? Just because we don't know where we are, it doesn't mean we can't find a way out. Do you want out of here? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's so empty and dark. I may not have my memories, but I can tell I'm not meant to stay here. To be fair, you were attacked by some formless ent entity. Yeah, exactly. Come on, Alice. Why don't you come with me? As long as we're together, I'm sure we'll make it. Make what? Make it out of here. If you want out so badly, go find the exit. Don't drag me into it. You really don't want to escape? I really don't. Why not? You don't know what this place is either. Doesn't that frighten you? No, it doesn't. But... Actually, we're like, no, it doesn't. Huh. I may not know where we are, but I can make an educated guess. And what's that? I think we're trapped in a dream. I don't know exactly what this world is, but my gut instinct is telling me that this isn't reality. And if so, then a dream is the most realistic alternative. In a dream, suddenly the impossible is made possible and anything can happen. So this empty black void is a dream. We are not very imaginative if we just dream of an empty black space. I'm just saying. Is that so absurd? It sounds more like a nightmare, but... No, it's not absurd. It just strikes me as a really boring dream, that's all. Careful now! For all we know, this might be your dream we're talking about. And by the way... Ow! Could you quit pinching your cheek? That's such an old, worn-out trope. This is a dream that your brain will probably just recreate the pain anyway. Mm, fine. I'm glad you understand. So if this is my dream, does that mean you're just some fictional character my brain created? Or conversely, maybe you're the obnoxious fictional character. If this is my dream, I want to wake up. But whose dream is it, I wonder? Yours or mine? I guess whoever doesn't wake up will disappear. Yeah, probably. Anyway, now do you see? If this is a dream, then anything I do will be pointless because it's not real. So I may as well just stay here and... So you're scared? Excuse me? Well, that would explain why you don't want to leave, right? If this world is truly a dream, then by choosing to stay here, you're choosing not to wake up, right? <laughs> Look at his face like, uh... Yeah, because then we get the... Okay, so this is basically all the same, but anyway... It's okay. Get your hand away from me. Try to hold my hand without my consent and I'll sue you for sexual harassment. Help! Police! She's touching my body! Even if this world is a dream and one of us disappears, I'll never let go. Now let's get going. Our hair is like seven miles long and I think I say this every single time we see this CG, but like, damn. Quit tossing out baseless claims. I swear, your word carries no weight. Like popcorn or something. I admit, I don't have anything that I can that can give credence to my claims, but the same goes for you. We both have amnesia. You calling me a liar? I'm saying we're in the same boat, and I want to believe in you. Good grief, you're so naive. No sugar and no substance like caramel syrup. So what you're saying is, you want us to stick together? Yes, of course. How very astute. After all, no matter what I say, you have zero intention of letting go, right? Well, I promised I wouldn't, didn't I? I hate this. 
Hand in hand, you wander through the darkness. Moments earlier, you were overwhelmed with fear, but now the warmth of his hand reassures you. You say we'll make it, but what if we don't? Hmm, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Oh my god, that's the worst thing you could have said! A selfish, irresponsible answer from a selfish, irresponsible girl. And yet here you are, tagging along with me anyway. You're such a good person. Huh. Well, I got nothing against caramel popcorn every now and then. <laughs> and so the friendly conversation continues. Sure, friendly. No ground to walk on, no concept of time, no one else in sight. And yet, with Alice at your side, you don't miss any of it. You walk and walk and walk until there appears before you a giant looking glass. Whoa, what is that thing? It's a mirror. Is it? Oh, it is? Yeah. At first glance, it might look like a huge crystal, but if you look carefully, you can see our reflections. Sugoi, incredible. The question is, is it a mirror by intention or by chance? Functionally, there's no difference. Either way, it's still a mirror. Weird that it's so sparkly here in the dark. Is it glowing or is light shining onto it from somewhere? If this thing is weird for glowing, then what about us? Oh, good point. I didn't think of that. How did you fail to notice all this time? Are you being dense on purpose or does it come naturally? Either way, you're still a fake, cute, fake, stupid freak. Maybe it's bioluminescence. Is that the word I'm thinking of? Yes, yeah, something like that. We're just a couple of deep-sea viper fish, you and me. But humans don't have photo... Oh, photophores? But humans don't have photophores. At least that I know of. Gee, thanks for killing the joke. You're welcome. I wonder how it works. Oh, but if this is a dream, then anything's possible. So I guess it doesn't matter. Say, do you think this mirror is a gateway to another world? I mean, you see it all the time in fiction, right? Passing through the mirror into a different realm? Beats me. If you're so curious, then check for yourself. But just so we're clear, I want no part of it. Knowing how reckless and foolhardy you are, you'll charge in head first like... Let's jump in! Whee! Give me a break, lady. Yeah, if I screw up here, both of us will pay the price. And in more ways than one. If there really is a world beyond the looking glass, what do you think it's like? A mirror reflection of this one, obviously. Then it must be a fun place with lots of people. What? So the opposite of black is white? Sonotori. That's right. You truly... Oh, that's me. That's not me. Wait. You truly are simple-minded. That being said, looking at it from that sort of unevolved monocellular perspective... It's possible the other world is in fact reality. I can't believe monocellular. I didn't have to pause and be like, monocellular. Okay, just kind of... I'm just saying. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Oh, really? You disagree with my theory? And why, pray tell, is that? Like I said earlier, if this is all a dream, then it's a really boring one. I may have amnesia, but I'm pretty sure most dreams are more entertaining than this. Some things are purely black and white monochrome like chess precisely like chess did you know the word monochrome originally referred to paintings done in different shades of a single color but of course when you factor in the background color you end up with two colors total you know for an amnesiac you sure know a whole lot of pointless trivia yeah well so do you <laughs> his face is like yeah good point if this is a dream, then it makes sense that we both draw from the same memories. We're one and the same! Is it too late to take my dream theory back? Yep. Ugh. Can't believe I've been lumped in with this lunatic. What an insult to my dignity. Anyway, back on topic. Regardless of whose dream it is, I get the feeling it won't be easy to get back to the real world. Why is that? Because I somehow doubt the person having this boring dream wants to go back to reality. Well, do you want to stay here then? No way! If there's a mirror here, then it has to mean something. Maybe it does or maybe it doesn't. Y you said you're pretty sure this is a dream, right? That's correct. 
Well, maybe it's a lucid dream and we can consciously control what happens within it. That is how dreams work. One can say that a dream is a reproduction or recreation of our memories. In most cases, the people and places that appear in your dreams are taken wholesale from your past or shit you saw on TV. Like, you know, if you ascribe freaking like meeting to dreams, like, oh my God, I had a dream of an alligator. You can't be like, oh, it means something. Because it could just be because you were flipping TV and you saw an alligator on TV on the Nature Channel and then that's why it's in your brain. But what if you forgot you saw the alligator? Then you're like, oh my god, I saw alligators in my, my dream and it means I'm fear of being chased. Or I don't know what the hell alligators mean in dream things. I don't. But, you know, and then you just start thinking that like, oh my god, yeah, I'm like worried about this because alligators mean that. But it doesn't. It's just because you saw it. Problem with trying to interpret your dreams is like, why the hell did I dream of that? I don't know. Dreams can't show you the answer to things you don't know, but they can take what you've experienced and invent a solution from there. This is funny because we're playing this in tandem with I, the Somnium Files, where we go into people's brains and kind of mess with, not exactly dreams, but just their, like, weird, almost like dreams. So it's just like, yeah, see? And it's not everything. We have to try to figure out what they're trying to tell us in their brains. Kind of like in dreams. Kind of like a dream. Anyway. In that case, I want to pass through the mirror to the other side. And what will you do when you get there? I don't know, but if there's a path open to me, then I intend to take it. You are nauseatingly optimistic, you know that? Yep, life's more fun that way. Yearning to travel to the other side, you reach out to the mirror. And suddenly it radiates a blinding light. <laughs> when the light fades, the mirror no longer reflects you, but two other figures. On the left is a man as white as snow. Ah, I want you, wizard, but we have to wait. On the right is a man draped in all the world's darkness. That's interesting. They seem familiar somehow. Funny you should say that. I was just thinking the same thing. You prod the surface of the mirror with your finger and it ripples like water. Looks like it'll let us through. Sure does. What the... When I touched the one on the right, it turned all black. Huh. A very ominous. It's practically screaming out. Look out. Oh, it's practically screaming. Look out. I'm dangerous. Stay away. Want to check it out? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you getting all excited for? Chill. Take a hint and read the room. I'm saying don't go. See that? It's all dark and closed off. Try and stick your head in there. You'll end up crying for your mommy. I'm telling you. Dang. That's unfortunate. What's unfortunate is your lack of critical thinking. Not to mention my own for sticking with you. Although it's really hard. Like now my voice is breaking and I can't do Alice anymore. You're going to stick with me? If you're not going to let go, then I have no choice. All right, then let's go. Together, you and Alice reach out to the mirror. Then you walk through the glass and jump down into the looking glass world. Oh, I guess we don't have a choice. All the other ones gave you a choice which one you want to do. I was assuming we do Snow White before you do the wizard. But I guess... Ooh, hi, we can't do that. That's not allowed to be copyrighted, so... I, so I'm assuming we're, I was going to go in Snow White's walkthrough, Snow White's first. But I'm again, I think that's where we are. We'll find out. Um, We've always kind of done them in order, you know, but... I'm guessing you have to do Snow White before you can do the wizard, so. Once upon a time in the looking glass world, there lived a peculiar young boy. That sounds more like Snow White. He was slight of build with lips as red as an apple and skin as white as snow. Okay, we in Snow White's route. He was as beautiful as a fairy tale prince, and he stood out from the crowd wherever he went. I think we gave him the soft, delicate voice because he just seems like he'd have one. But once all the people in the land had settled into their beds, the snowy prince journeyed out to the lake. The air was so cold that his breath turned white, but the prince was unbothered. He simply gazed out to the lake. His body was as cold as ice, and his attitude was chilly. He looked at the world around him with icy eyes, too. But by keeping a cool head, he could see things for what they really, are, really were. 
for you see, his heart gleamed like a mirror. Hmm. Silvery hair fluttered as a pair of eyes bored into me like two icicles. Hey, big brother? Will you tell me the story of the prince as white as snow? And apparently there is a fan disc for this and you can date Wolf and the Huntsman. And I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure after I just think maybe they'll localize that too and that'll be amazing. Although it's weird because that's kind of like he's, the Huntsman is our brother, so... But, I mean, each one of these worlds, everything is different. You know what I mean? Like, when we went into the Cinderella world, Cinderella, Snow White, and Gretel were siblings. And we just ended up there. You know what I mean? And, like, then in Gretel's route, Gretel was our brother. So, I mean. One day, my mother said to me, Now listen here. You're not like all the other kids. You're a precious angel. That's why you mustn't play outside. The world is filled with wicked wolves, and you can never trust them. So if one of them talks to you, be sure to ignore them. Right, Red Riding Hood. You have to watch the house while I'm gone, understand? And if anyone knocks on the door, don't let them in, no matter what. The funniest thing is, is isn't this the shit that Red Riding Hood's mother said to him? It was like, don't ever, you're my precious angel, don't. Is, are we us or are we Snow White right now? Anyway, yes, mother. My sweet, beautiful mother. She loved flowers, fairy tales, and all things beautiful. I'm sorry, mother. I'm sorry I didn't listen. Because it's obviously not. I'm assuming, are we? I wish I knew. I wish I knew if we were... I feel like we're supposed to be Snow White right now. I'm just going to read it normal because I'm not 100% sure who we are. But it's also very weird that Snow White's story is like the mother locking them up. Just kind of like... In Red Riding Hood. It's interesting. But anyway. I traveled through the dark woods near the lake and soon arrived back at home. Is anyone there? But no matter how hard I knocked, no one answered. This was definitely the right house. There weren't any others in sight. Hesitantly, I twisted the doorknob. Strangely enough, it was unlocked. The moonlight streaming in through the window faintly illuminated the interior. In the instant I saw it, my body froze solid. What was I looking at right now? Was this a dream or a delusion? If this was a dream, did that mean I'd gone crazy? Or had I been crazy for a while now? Here in the Looking Glass world, winter had finally arrived. It was a tourist trap with a naturally cold climate, and as such, our winters were pretty harsh. Or at least, they were supposed to be. But lately, the afternoons were comparatively warm, with no need for a jacket. Proof of global warming, I guess. That day I was wearing my favorite white dress, running errands for my brothers. Okay, so like the Huntsman is our brother, but who else is our brother? And this. Gah, I'm late! I raced down the street, both arms laden with shopping bags. One of my more paranoid brothers, Red Riding Hood, had asked me to be home before dark, but the sun was already on the horizon and daylight was running out. It's really interesting that Red Riding Hood is one of our brothers. Hmm. Kind of interesting. I... Okay. I didn't see that happening, but okay. I was still quite a long way from our house, too. It would take approximately 20 more minutes of walking to get there. At this rate, I was not going to make it back before dark. To briefly explain how I ended up in this situation, I got distracted window shopping while I was in town. Yes, it was completely my fault, and I deserved whatever lecture I was about to get. Now that I think about it, I could save some time if I cut through the forest, but didn't Red say the forest is dangerous? There was a well-known shortcut that passed through the woods near the lake straight to downtown, and as such, our neighbors used it all the time. But once night fell, its popularity plummeted. Six months from now, the forest would be dotted with lights in the windows of all the summer homes, but during winter, it was practically a graveyard. Long story short, the forest was presently too dark to safely walk through. 
the sky above me was slowly turning from pale blue to orange. Sure, there was comparatively less light at this hour, but as long as I cut straight through the woods, I can make it out before the sun set completely. Will you take the shortcut through the woods? Apparently we're supposed to say yes. <laughs> I'm sorry, Red. And so I decided to disobey my brother and cut through the woods. But Karma swiftly bit back. Whoa! I tripped over something and fell flat on my face. Ow, ow, ow! My limbs splayed in all directions as my groceries flew out of my arms and tumbled a short distance away. The entire front of my body ached from the impact. What on earth had I tripped over? I pushed myself up into a sitting position and looked over my shoulder to see a single red apple lying on the ground. What the... What's an apple doing out here? Who do I look like? Isaac Newton? There were no apple trees in this forest. So where did it come from? Someone must have dropped it. Not like it was my problem, though. I rose to my feet, but just then something yanked my hair backwards. What the? Twisting my head around, I found that my hair was caught in a tree branch. Ugh. My heart sank. Not only had I disobeyed my brother by taking the shortcut, but now I was wasting all the time I would have otherwise saved. If I tried to stand, the branch would tear my hair out, but I couldn't untangle myself unless I stood up to do so. The simplest solution would be to snap the branch, but it was directly behind me and I couldn't quite reach. Ow, 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 ow! I tried to turn my body, but my hair only grew more and more tangled. This is like... Some kind of bullshit. And the longer I battled with the stupid branch, the darker my surroundings grew. Like, what? <laughs> Everything has to be wrong with you to get stuck in this situation. It's like, this is physically impossible. You have the worst luck. Great, now I've done it. My whisper echoed on the chilly night breeze. I was completely and utterly screwed. Here I was in the forest at night, the one thing I wasn't supposed to do. At this point, a lecture from my brother was the least of my worries. Would I even make it home alive? Oh, Heavenly Father, is this my punishment for my sins? But just as I started praying, I heard the crunch of dead leaves underfoot. I'm saved! Or murdered. I'm sure it's Snow White, but sensing that it was a passerby, I looked up eagerly. Yeah. There in the dimly lit forest was the most beautiful male specimen I had ever seen. His skin and hair were both white as snow, almost like he was an angel who had fallen to earth. I was going to say ghost, but sure. You okay? As I lay there, he called out to me. God, even his voice is beautiful. Not when I give it to him! Y yeah... I answered shyly. I must have looked pretty stupid lying sprawled on the ground, but I didn't care. My heart was fluttering at the idyllic prospect of this beautiful man rescuing me. However... Okay, then. The man gracefully turned and headed back the way he'd come. Hey, wait! Please! I'm not okay at all! As I shouted after him, he mercifully came to a stop. What do you need? My hair's caught in, the, caught in a branch? You want me to free you? Yes, please. I nod vigorously. With each nod, the branch yanked my hair painfully, but right now I didn't care. The handsome man walked right up to me, reached out, and roughly grabbed the branch instead of untangling me? Wait, what? Hold on a minute. This is the part where you're supposed to lean in close and I get all flustered. Wait, what was that snapping sound? There, fixed it. Your idea of fixing it was to snap the branch off entirely? Well, um, thank you very much. I was in a real bind. The broken branch dangled from my hair as I curtsied. No biggie. His flawless lashes fluttered as he shrugged and walked away. After he was gone, I stood there for a while, staring into space. My cheeks were burning and my heart was thumping in my chest. Then the next thing I knew, my lips were moving of their own accord. I'm in love. It was the winter before my twentieth birthday, and I, Spacey Aris Arisu, had just met my Prince Charming. Arisu. I mean, I like the fact that she'd love at first sight, because, I mean, he, it, it, we are in his route, so. When I arrived safely at home, I told my four siblings everything that had happened. Wait, okay. Cinderella, Red Riding Hood, the Huntsman, and Gretel. Those are our siblings. There you go. 
Prince Charming! Ugh, that's so cringy. Cinderella rolled his eyes at me as he ate a slice of apple pie. He was the oldest son, and he ran the household. Kaguya is our brother? Okay, what about the Huntsman? He was in... I figured he was, because he's always our brother, and he was kind of in the intro scene. Remember, we were like, tell us about the prince. And then we passed out, remember? Oh, God, I gotta remember Kaguya's voice. Well, anyway. <laughs> What's the harm? Our puppet's allowed to dream, surely. Yeah, that was it. Woo! Okay, so we can't do that for the wizard. So what the fuck are we gonna do for the wizard anyway? You let me know. Thankfully, I could count on Kaguya, the third son, to stand up for me. So tell us, who is this Prince Charmin you're going on about? I don't know. He left before I could ask him his name. I let out a small sigh. If only I'd gone after him instead of zoning out like a ditz. I could have interrog- I mean- Asked for him for his name. What a shame. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. So where did you meet him then? In the forest. I answered with a smile. I miss Kagri so much. He's so precious and beautiful. Look at him. I love him. And in response. The forest. The second son, Red Riding, had looked up from his food in alarm. Can I ask you something? The look on his face was dead serious. I think that's the voice we gave Red. I'm not 100% sure, but we're going with it. Y yeah. But it was too late to curse my folly. Are you saying you were walking through the forest alone at night? Uh, well... I faltered. You were, weren't you? Y yeah. The look on his face told me he could see right through me, so I answered honestly. Why? So I could get home sooner? But it's dark in the forest at night. I mean, technically it was evening at most. It's winter. The forest is pitch black by evening. You have no idea how much danger you put yourself in. I'm sorry. If apologies could fix everything, we wouldn't need the police. I know. Slumping my shoulders, I endured the lecture from Red. He was completely right, of course. I had no room to argue. Having experienced it firsthand, the forest was indeed dark and scary at night. But if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't have met my Prince Charming. There are wicked wolves lurking in the forest. What if they attacked you? I'm sorry. I, it was just like, all of a sudden I was like, is that thunder? So fucking excited. I love thunderstorms. Although, you know, with my luck, power is going to go out because it's already gone out like three times today. Like, just quick flicks, like, off on. One time it stayed off for like four seconds. But every single time, even if it's just like on off, fucking internet, ten minutes later, oh my god, hurry up! So. Uh, anyway. But thunderstorms. Woo! I love it. Ugh. I would fight them? I dropped into a karate stance. Hiya! You are a proper young lady, and ladies do not get to fights with wolves and make it out alive. Mmm. I don't know about that. I can think of a few female martial artists who could totally take a wolf or two. Also, Red Riding Hood is a wolf. Come on, Red. Let her off the hook. I'm sure she knows what she did was wrong. Cinderella stopped watching from the sidelines and stepped in to help. But... And you won't be doing it again now, will you, Spacey? Even Kaguya was joining in now. So there was only one thing I could really say. Oh, probably not. I shook my head, beaming. Dude. Okay, definitely not. I hastily corrected myself. <laughs> oh, Cinderella, I do miss you too. Well done. That's our good girl. <laughs> I grinned as Kaguya stroked my hair. Kaguya. Kaguya? Kaguya. Kaguya? Kaguya. Sounds better. To me, I don't know which one's right. As for Red, he was still giving me a stern look, and I could tell there was more he wanted to say. Hmm? At first, I flinched under a steely gaze before deciding to formally apologize for my actions. I'm sorry for making you all worry. I couldn't really blame Red for being angry. For one thing, I had disobeyed his orders, and for another, I knew his anger was proof of how much he cared. He let out a heavy sigh. Well, there's no use crying over spilled milk. Just don't do it again, please. Okay, thanks for caring about me, Red. <laughs> well, I'm just... Glad nothing bad happened to you. Blushing, he turned away. <laughs> I was so happy I couldn't help but giggle. 
Cinderella, the eldest son. Red Riding Hood, the second son. Kaguya, the third son. These were my kind, loving older brothers. I thought she said she had four siblings, but I'm guessing we're the fourth? Okay. Now then. Once the matter was settled, Cinderella changed the subject. Can one of you please do something about him? Huh? I looked in the direction he was pointing. Gretel? What voice did we give Gretel? Not happening, not happening, not happening, not happening, not happening, not happening, not happening. Gretel, the youngest sibling, was sitting on the floor and staring into space. Okay, so Gretel, we did say four. I was like, where's our fourth brother anyway? Oh, right. No wonder it felt like someone was missing. He appears to be muttering something under his breath. Er, yeah, I reckon so. It was so creepy, none of us knew how to react. For the time being, I figured I could at least listen to what Gretel was saying. Sister is my future bride. There's no way she'd fall for some Prince Charming. If looks are all that matter, I'd say I'm pretty handsome myself. Prince Charming my ass. Oh, this is a little disturbing. What's wrong with green? Green's a very soothing color. You don't like it? What, should I douse myself in bleach? Well, you know what they say. Let grumpy Gretels lie. Agreed. And so the rest of us went back to our dinner, mildly creeped out by Gretel's antics. Mildly creep. Okay. It's a little weird, right? Because I'm really curious how this is all going to tie together or what's, like, the reality. Because, like, everything's a little different. And all the characters are there, but they're different. But Snow White, Gretel, Cinderella were siblings in the first one, right? And then the Huntsman was actually our brother in both of the first stories we read um but we you know we had snuck off because cinderella was our betrothed right and we, whatever and then riding hood was gonna riding hood was gonna protect us in the second one it is wasn't he a cop or some shit or whatever well he's also a wolf and then his mother did the snow white thing like don't leave the house and then he left the house and like whatever right and didn't somebody kidnap him or something well, I f kind of forget his a little bit wow I'm missing so much shit um oh we set him up didn't we we set him up to be like listen dummy like wolf and everything I don't quite remember that one and then we lived here with Kaguya but was Cinderella our just our boss we just worked for him you know what I mean? But yet Cinderella is always living in this house with the cafe kind of thing going on. Kaguya was our bodyguard in the first one. Gretel is, oh, like, Gretel is in love with us kind of in this one in the background in the corner. But in his route, he cannot because we were his precious sister. I don't know. There's little things that in, you're like, they're kind of like, it's just that. You're like, huh. Weird. I don't know. It's weird. I wonder if they did that because they were like, you know, in all the other prior ones, Gretel's just like, whatever. And then all of a sudden you're like, Gretel, what the fuck? When you get to his route, because you are just not seeing that shit coming. And then now when you're doing this, you're like, <laughs> awkward laugh, because we know what happened in his route. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, anyway. Cinderella, the eldest son. Red Riding Hood, the second son. Kaguya, the third son. Gretel, the youngest son. And me, the eldest daughter. The five of us lived together peacefully in a cafe in the Looking Glass World. See, we're always in this cafe. With its primo location in a top tourist destination, we got a fair amount of business. Each day was more chaotic than the last, but for me, it was a happy and fulfilling life. The end. Beautiful. I feel like it was right around here that I fell. The next day I visited the forest on my lunch break. In hopes of another encounter with my prince, of course. <laughs> Since we met in this forest, it stood to reason that I might find him here. The culprit always returns to the scene of the crime, as they say. So I sat down at a random spot, took out my packed lunch, and waited for my reunion with Prince Charming. An hour later, I packed up and headed back to the cafe. I guess I can't really expect life to be that easy. Apple in hand, I let out a depressed sigh. In the end, Prince Charming never turned up. 
I had seen this coming, obviously, but it was still disappointing. Life right there. I kind of knew it was going to happen, but it still disappointed the fuck out of me. There's something wrong. The next thing I knew, Red was peering at me curiously from beneath his riding hood. Well, yeah, because... Who voices Red Riding Hood? Oh, fuck. Isn't it, um... Mm, I can't think of... I can't remember right now. Uh, I think Cinderella and Red Riding Hood are actually, like, BAs that are in a lot of the Atome games that we play. I'll have to look it up before we... In the next part. The color red reminded me of apples, which reminded me of my prince. It pained me to even look at him. What does it have to do with your prince charming or whoever? His gaze turned sharp. Yeah. I didn't want to lie to him, but at the same time, I didn't want him to worry for me any more than he already did. That reminds me. Those wild herbs and vegetables you picked have been a huge hit with the customers. To take my mind off things, I changed the subject. Oh, or... Yes, so it seems. Fortunately, he went with it. And today I found some winter bramble berries. They'll make for a lovely jam. He showed me his basket full of berries. Wow, thank you! I'm sure Gretel will be thrilled. I don't know about that. He glanced over at the corner of the room. Sister, 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 sister. Gretel repeated the word over and over like some kind of incantation. <laughs> this is literally going to be Gretel the whole route. <laughs> it's so fucking creepy and funny. This had lasted for several hours now. It appears he wasn't mentally prepared to handle the possibility that you might find someone special. <laughs> I'm flattered, but also kind of terrified. Uh, Gretel? Summoning my courage, I decided to speak to him. Sister? As I approached, he looked up at me with empty eyes. He was my precious baby brother. As such, it was my job as his big sister to cheer him up. It's so weird because it's almost like, should we have done this one and then had the creepy Gretel right after him and been like, oh god, Gretel, what? No. I like it the way they did it, though. That, like, Gretel's row because you didn't see that coming. You're like, oh, I did. Oh. I kind of knew that his route was going to be slightly iffy because uh, someone made the spoiler of mentioning, oh, well, I mean, you don't like certain things. I'm like, Gretel's route, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, we all know how I feel about Toma from Amnesia, okay? And yet, after, I swear, if I played that game now, I might not hate him as much as I did. But I'm really glad that I played that first and was like, fuck this bitch! And now I'm like, throw me in a cage, daddy. I don't know what. I just, look. Sashin from Steam Prison wants to throw me in a cage and abuse me. I'm gonna take it happily please sir may i have another i don't know i'm just saying we didn't get a route with him but you can imagine it and it's okay gretel it's like i mean i'm not gonna okay sure you're not my favorite out of the characters but like i don't dislike you i've actually kind of liked all of them so far like i kind of liked his saucy little attitude in cinderella's red i'm like i kind of like gretel's kind of fun he's a little like okay whatever <laughs> you suck oh hi you're a little snarky i like it you know? Um, Kaguya was my favorite from the get-go. I was like, look at this pretty bitch! I love him. I think we made him sound like Mary Poppins the first one we did, because I didn't realize it was him. When we had... <laughs> anyway. But, like, doing his, where you were like, um, what? This is disturbing. And now, in this one, you're like, uh oh, oh, so, okay. <laughs> He's doing this creepy shit. It's like, it's like an Easter egg. Just to make you feel a little uncomfortable. Anyway. As such, it was my job as his big sister to cheer him up. Listen, Gretel. I obviously love my prince in a way no one else can ever possibly compare. But you're still my little brother, okay? So you claim, but I know better. Instead of worrying about me, you spent your lunch break in the forest looking for him. Is he psychic? Or has he been stalking me? Probably the second one. Come on, Gretel, cheer up! Your big sister will buy you anything you want. Anything? He perked up. Yep, anything. I had a bad feeling about this, but I was willing to bite the bullet. Anything for my baby brother. I'm gonna need some whips and chains. I'm just kidding. Okay, then I want an $18 Belgian waffle. Good grief, that's pricey. What restaurant sells Belgian waffles for $18? Okay, sure. If you want a waffle, then I'll buy you a waffle. 
I had a feeling this would clear out the contents of my wallet, but I just have to suck it up. Anything for my baby brother. And a $20 special parfait. What kind of luxury ingredients do they put in $20 parfaits? In a $20 parfait, not plural. Sure, you can even order the special parfait. And the $10 house special tea. Okay, now that sounds like a ripoff. I can make you some tea anytime you want. We have all the ingredients right here at home. Tucking his knees up to his chin, he stared at the floor. I, I was just kidding! Of course I'll treat you to the $10 special tea. As I hastily amended my statement, Greta looked up gleefully. What a manipulative bitch. Well, I guess if you really insist, I'll forgive you. Bribery complete. And at almost $50, it was a rather expensive bribe indeed. So now that you've agreed to take me out on a date, what day are you available? As it turned out, my little brother could be surprisingly shrewd. Just then, Cinderella walked in. Hey! Don't just sit around in here. Everybody get back to work. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say. Just then, someone must have slammed their elbow against the table or something because a bowl fell to the floor with an ear-splitting bang. Gah! What was that? Are we under attack? What the hell? Which one of you left a damn bowl there? The flower from the bowl flew up into the air like a smoke bomb. <coughs> I, I can't see. <coughs> Did someone touch my butt? Y your butt? <coughs> Trapped inside a cloud of white, we all started to panic. Well, what's all this, then? I got Harry making a fuss from the... Dining... area. Well, I mean, what's happened? <laughs> With the whole room coated in flour, all I could really do was laugh. Okay. We're a little under time, but I'm gonna stop here just because who knows how long the next scene's gonna be. It could be quick. Like three lines, like our lunch break, or it could be longer. So I'm just going to stop here. Again, we're a little under time, but you know what? Sometimes you can be a little under time because a lot of times we go over. So anyway, um, I'm going to end this here and we will continue in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.